We're here at the Action Martial Arts Hall of Honors and Expo in Atlantic City at the Tropicana. Okay, and we've been having some great people in entertainment, in Hollywood, martial arts, so on and so forth. And you know something? This guy right here, Curtis Lee, well, he's the man. He's, I mean, I, I, guardian angels, so on and so forth. You've done so many things, Curtis. So many things. I'm honored to have you on here. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with uh, such a diverse group of people in the martial arts community. You know, I sometimes fail to realize how much the martial arts and the guardian angels were birthed together because obviously that was our training that was our mentality that was the purpose in going out in the streets is to use the skills to protect people who could not help themselves the elderly the women the children those who, uh, who were incapable of defending themselves but then in walking uh, through the corridors here and realizing how many esteemed martial artists and sifus and masters always use the guardian angel image as a motivation to do things in their community. It may not have been a patrol, but other things. And boy, that really pumps you up because you realize you had an impact beyond just the streets. When you, when you start the guardian angels, it had nothing to do with money, it had nothing to do with anything but trying to provide safety for the community. Well, at the time that I started the guardian angels, I was a night manager in the Bronx at Mickey D's. And it couldn't have been any worse. I mean, uh, the Bronx in 1979 was slipping into the abyss. People, if they had money, they left. If they had no money, they hunkered down. And the Uzi toting, dope sucking, psychopathic killing machines, they laid siege to the community, the schools, the subways. So I focus on the subways right after work at Mickey D's because I realized there were no police. There were no uniformed or undercover police, and we were the only line of defense for the people at that time. And they embraced us, but unfortunately the officials and the police did not embrace us, and it was really 13 years of hell until we finally got uh, the recognition that we would do. At that time, they considered you vigilantes and so on and so forth. Oh, not only vigilantes, uh, they called us the Hells Angels. Uh, they thought we were a gang coming right out of that uh, cult classic uh, movie, The uh, Warriors. And more importantly, they looked at me as if, gee, if you take out the head of the snake, then maybe the snake will go away. So they locked me up 76 times. They gave me wooden shampoos, concrete facials, uh, rough rides, the whole nine yards. But luckily, we were able to keep it together and then begin to expand across the country and the world. We're now in 13 countries and 130 cities. And the opposition that existed initially no longer exists. Curtis, you know, when that happened, when you hit that adversity, that brick wall, you could have easily have stopped what you were doing. Oh, well, let me tell you something. Don't kid yourself. I thought about it many times. I, what is the point? I keep getting locked up and being put through the system. And now I'm with Mutz and Skells that they know I'm dedicated to locking up, so it's like feet don't fail me now. I mean, you talk about rumbles uh, in a cage match. You're stuck in an eight by Literally, literally. Ten the original guys. UFC. Right, and you can't go to sleep. You, you got to keep one eye open. And one one guy comes at you, one Gavon, one Jadru, and then another guy comes at you. Uh, it was a real test. Uh, uh, but I always saw, saw the people responded well, and people appreciated what we were doing, and they had nothing else. So along with the other young men and young women who were part of those first groups, those first uh, patrols when it wasn't all that popular, we were able to overcome all that adversity. And then, you know, the great thing about it, when you had, when you, when you had the Guardian Angels when you first began, because I remember, I, I grew up in the Bronx, so, you know, I kind of know the, the whole storyline. When you have the elderly going home and they feel safer because they see a red hat on the corner, that's... It's priceless. Well, you know, initially they were terrified of a sea elderly because they saw predominantly Hispanic and black uh, young men and young women who had been stereotyped as being criminals, thugs, gangbangers, drug dealers. So now all of a sudden to be introduced to a group that reflected mostly minority members who were good to begin with. They didn't need a red beret and a red sateen jacket to prove it. But people were so believing the stereotype that all of a sudden you take somebody off the street, you give them some training, some discipline, a regimen, you put a red beret and red sateen jacket, and now the same person who would be running in fear of them or be prejudiced against them wants to embrace them, take them home, and, and actually feed them a meal. That's a tremendous turnaround, and it just shows you human nature. 
people want to do good, they want to recognize good, but just sometimes they just don't have the vehicle to do it. And luckily I was able to create that through the Guardian Angels. And that, that's a good point. You created a vehicle and that vehicle actually carried a lot of people that may have, may have went down that wrong road. You gave them a path to, I guess, their, their own fulfillment, their own goodness, their own, I don't know, vindication. Well, you have to have faith in people, which I've always had. And sure, I've been disappointed from time to time giving somebody a second or a third chance. But I've always told the Guardian Angels, uh, the new Jacks, the recruits, that whatever you've done in the past, uh, this is a new day. You get a chance to start with a fresh piece of paper. You can undo a lot of that through your community service. And more importantly, you can re-image yourself, rebrand yourself. People will look at you differently, but you got to earn it. It's not just, we're not going to enable you. We're not just going to give you the guardian angel look. You have to be dedicated. And that's where a lot of shortcomings take place because people in general, they like good things. They want to be attached to it. But they don't understand, like anything else, there's a lot of hard work that goes along with it. And you got to do a lot of heavy lifting in order to maintain the reputation now going on 37 years. And you, you've done that and you've made a, lot of, you made a big impact on the world, I feel with what you've done because again you could you, you could have just given up but you know you've you've it's, it's just funny how you were able to create something where and then when I see you on TV years ago you were defending yourself today you're actually sending a message and people are respecting that big difference well because of consistency they'll respect the fact that you've stood the test of time 37 years and they know the ordeals that I and others have gone through but I think uh, in the martial arts community it was very important because oftentimes martial artists were stereotyped as being lug heads you know muscle heads brute force no thought uh, nothing between their brain but a big muscle and then I think by us incorporating the martial arts, we were able to show the community how important this was, because we don't carry weapons. We have no special powers or privileges, yet we will make citizens arrests. We will do physical interventions. That it's really the mind, which is what the martial arts is about, followed by your physical skills. And I think we uh, actually convinced a lot of people that the martial arts is the intellectual way to go about addressing problems, not just a thoracic physical way. There's plenty of, but it's a thinking man and thinking woman's operation that you're getting involved with. The idea is not to have to fight, not to get hit, not to get injured. You don't want to come out bloody and bruised. If anything, you want to be able, through crisis intervention, to calm a situation down because you have enough self-esteem and enough confidence. If things get out of hand, uh, you can get down and do it and do it with a minimal amount of force so that you're not being thought of as stomping somebody needlessly or being abusive or going over the top. So it's more defending and diffusing? Defending, diffusing, but also showing that you're a peacemaker. You're not a predator. You're a peacemaker. And there are so many predators out there. They're out there in the white-collar business world. They're out there in the streets. You see it all the time, Madoff and so on and so forth. Right, so you need to have these... Uh, representatives in the community, which is always in, in, epitomized in a local dojo or a martial arts field. And the other thing is, I don't care what the style is. You know, everybody gets caught up in these styles. My style is better than your style. Mine is the original, the authentic, the one and only. I say, okay, there might be some legitimacy to that. There's no overall body that authenticates and licenses people to do it. But I'll accept you for the good nature that martial arts is. And if you apply your skill to helping your community, I'm on to that. That's good stuff. Curtis, I have the utmost respect for you, and I'm, I'm happy you came on the show. And anyone that's listening to this, watching this, viewing this, check out Curtis Lewis. Check out the Guardian Angels. See the good things they're doing, because let me tell you something. After all these years, being able to see you on TV and actually st they, they, they're, they're embracing you and you're sending that message makes me happy. Thank you, brother. Thank you. My pleasure. Would you want to give your website or any oh, website sure. information? Sure, to get in touch with the Guardian Angels, it doesn't matter where you're looking at this in the virtual world, just go online to guardianangels.org. That's guardianangels.org. There you go, you got it, Curtis. Thank you so much, my friend. Good.